There are no forests on Earth. When you read this loud headline, even with an exclamation mark, every sensible person will say that I am out of my mind and will throw at me millions of photos with forests. I want you to believe this is another trick. They made us think that this is a forest. Actually, you are looking at 30 meter bushes. This is total bullshit and nonsense, you will say to me. Of course, we know what forests look like. We all walked and strolled in them. Well, that's an expected reaction and fair. But after listening or reading this chapter, its headline won't seem strange to you because you will overturn your concept of forest 360 degrees. And now, first things first. We will begin with a well-known picture. Children see nine dolphins on it, but adults see two lovers. A huge difference, do you agree with me? Make yourself find dolphins now and find out how it's hard. Feminine fruities will flatly refuse to transform into dolphins. It's funny because children's problem will be exactly the opposite. This is the first fact. The picture is single, but we see it completely differently. What is more, children and adults can't exchange perceptions. Why is it so? It is simple. You see the way that matrix ordered, but not the way the real world looks like. Our eyes became traitors over time. We were blinded, yet, in childhood, the outward world is quite different. Our eyes became traitors over time. We were blinded, yet, in childhood, the outward world is quite different. At 30 years of life, this prism gets the status of mind protector. And at 40 years of life, you can go crazy without this prism, worldview. You think I'm exaggerating? Look at this photo. I'm claiming that this is a mesa that was formed from a magmatic melt from the Earth's depths about 200 million years ago. You think I'm out of my mind? In my turn, I can blame you for the same thing. You will understand soon. We will come back to this grass plot later, and now, Let's remember how we bond with old, strong trees, sometimes even take photos, trying to hug a huggable stem of the tree. But old trees are a rarity. They are all registered, they are preserved like a memorial of nature. There was uproar on the internet about forests. Why are all forests on the earth, even in Siberia, not older than 200 years? Where are the giants? People are in an uproar about it, but I want to step to this question from a different angle. From the side of the earth's poles. The thing is, that even Soviet biologists found strangeness in the poles. A natural amount of water is kept in ice and snow. And there is a natural percentage of carbon dioxide in the world's ocean. These abnormal concentrations tell us exactly about a worldwide fire of the past. Using simple math, those scientists concluded that those fires carried away 99% of the Earth's biosphere. We all know that living cells consist of hydrogen and carbon, so the ice at the poles is made, for the most part, from water from burnt organisms.
And now, think about this number. 99%. It means that everything that now grows, flies, swims, and runs on the earth is 20,000 times less in the world than was before this catastrophe. Twenty thousand times. To imagine this, look at this picture. This piece of bread is humans, plants, and animals, just this pathetic, small piece of bread in the truck. It represents the Earth's biosphere before those times. I hope you understand that today's myth about overpopulation is just pure hoax and nonsense. But here's a problem. Biologists divided this number between all continents, and nothing succeeded. There is not a place on dry land to place it. This theory, correct as it seems, but snow and ice are there, not going anywhere. Fact is fact. It must be placed on the land. But, as always, illumination comes all of a sudden. Stereotype of thinking is to blame. We are too quick to think 30 meters tall forest is like a virus penetrated in our head and biologists' heads, and prevent a solution to this problem. If plants can fit broadwise, then, we should fit them upwards, and everything becomes clear. In this new theory, a hypothetical forest of unthinkable height was drawn. And here's the thing, we found these photos. This is one of the sequoias in the California Redwood. In 1880 to 1920, that has survived by a miracle when the planet was bombarded in 1816. Just imagine how many years this tree needs to grow to this size. And then come freaks with saws and axes. One, two, and no more tree. In the proportion of these trees, we can see root. The diameter of the stump is about three times bigger than woodcutters grow. Let's look at this formula. Just think about it. You are entering a forest whose height is not 30 meters but 100. Here's your fairy forest from fairy tales and books. Forests that are lost forever because of barbarians. I understand that they are just wage workers that they must feed their family, that it's an order from above. But if every single woodcutter refused to do this crime, all forests would be saved because Mason's demons are too arrogant to do it with their own little hand. That's why I will send these merry woodcutters defenders to well-known places. Look at these photos carefully. They look like satanic bacteria that finish, kill, the forest organism. For those who think that trees were killed just for wood materials, I want to dispel your claims. Trees are energy generators. They produce constant electricity, oxygen from photosynthesis. They have a root network program to exchange data. Our ancestry had a theory that trees are programmed to keep data from everything on the planet and save it in their information portal in the carbon fiber. I don't know the reason, but some sequoias, this one was left alive. Even put a fence, saying wildlife sanctuary. Of course, guides in the park will tell you tales from the crypt. How in the stupid zoic era, stupid czars scratched their boot on the old sequoias of California. Let's summarize. 
Everything remains of the giant trees of the past are found, and homeless ice and snow of the poles took their place in the mosaic. It seems like everything is clear, but it's not. Nothing is so simple. If you take myths and legends of all nations, you can find a lot of stories about people, animals, and plants morphing into stone. This is normal because paleontologists all over the world keep petrified fossils of humans, animals, and plants. There are so many of them that museums are overflowed with petrified fossils of clovers, frogs, lizards, pieces of dinosaurs, and on and on. Frogs and clovers, it's all good, but we have a forest debate. Where are the trees? Old sequoias of California do not fit here because they are made of carbon. It means that they cannot call this the silicon era. Why do I know that? First of all, they were cut and sawed by standard instruments. All axes and saws would break on silicon. So, where are silicon trees if those giants from carbon are not related to the silicon era? Guess what? They were found. Try to think where, in the same North America, in Arizona to be precise. Ah, this zone of arrogance. There are so many things going on there. The giant quarry that now is called the Grand Canyon. Like one person under the nickname. Wake up, human, said. It's apogee of cynicism to name quarry wastes as national parks.